Donald Trump has been making some threats lately that have more to them than meets the eye. Now, he has mastered this art of political doublespeak, where he can be saying multiple things at once, and half of the country can be taking him seriously when he says these things, and the other half of the country can conveniently detect his sarcasm, but then in other moments, he's being completely serious. It's really confusing. This article reads, Trump warns, quote, very bad Google may be shut down. Trump may have won over much of Silicon Valley, but he can continues to attack Google in a new rant on Fox. And the thing is, this ties directly back to Project 2025, the mandate for leadership, and I'll explain why right now. Leave a like if you appreciate what I do. So Donald Trump has been making subtle references to Project 2025 in his speeches throughout the past year, and I'm about to prove it throughout this video. Example number one is Project 2025 on page five says, pornography should be outlawed. The people who produce it and distribute it should be imprisoned. Educators and public librarians who purvey it should be classified as registered sex offenders. Already, this is completely, completely unhinged. What is pornography classified as? Is Game of Thrones the show pornography because there is nudity in it? What? They don't provide definitions. They just have vague, vague terms with wildly authoritarian prescriptions. But here is where it gets wild. And telecommunications and technology firms that facilitate its spread should be shuttered. So multiple times throughout Project 2025, they talk about shutting down technology firms, shutting down telecommunications firms, axing their access to the world, making sure that they can't compete in the market, basically just crippling them from the kneecaps. And here we have Donald Trump warning that he wants to shut down Google. And this isn't the only example of Donald Trump subtly referencing Project 2025. Let's read this article first. Donald Trump unleashed a tirade against Google during a Friday interview with Fox News host Maria Bartiromo, accusing the platform of refusing to apologize for blocking some results related to his attempted assassination. In the segment in which Trump attempted to outline the dangers of AI before Bartiromo redirected him to the subject of big tech, Trump went after the search engine Google, and they are also a massive company, noting that Facebook representatives called Trump to apologize for flagging some posts featuring photos of his assassination attempt with fact checks. Trump said Google. Nobody called from Google. Here is the clip. Uh, Google. Nobody called from Google. One of the things like doing a show like yours, you, your show, you know, you see it on Fox. But when you really see it is all over the place. They take clips of your show that you're doing right now with me. And if I do a good job, they're going to vote for me. They're going to vote for me because it's not just on Fox. It's on Fox is a smaller part of it. You're on all over this, those little beautiful cell phones. You're on you're all over the place. I mean, Kamala HQ on Twitter is right when they call it unintelligible. Trump goes on an unintelligible rant. Google. Nobody calls from Google. One of the things doing a show like yours, it just never makes any sense. Trump's less than succinct description, possibly referring to Google's practice of algorithmic search result ranking, which conservatives have blasted as unfair in recent days, was followed with a harsh warning message to the tech giant. Quote, Google has been very bad. He always just uses simple phrases. Not good, but bad. They've been irresponsible, Trump. Trump said. They've been very irresponsible, he said. And I have a feeling that Google's going to be close to shut down because I don't think Congress is going to take it. Towards the end of the Fox segment, he also mold stripping Google of its Section 230 protections and praised Elon Musk and X as Musk throws cash behind a pack supporting his re-election bid. So a few things. Number one, Donald Trump was just talking about the dangers of AI, but Elon Musk is somebody that he praised in the next breath, and Elon Musk has been posting AI videos of VP Harris that have been getting over a million likes. Number two, Donald Trump says he hopes Congress shuts it down. He doesn't think they're going to take it, but Donald Trump, if he's reelected, is known for going outside of what Congress does and using executive orders to get things done. Think about the border wall. He shut down the entire government over that, and he would do the same thing with big tech. So that brings me on to the next hint that Donald Trump has been dropping about Project 2025. Now, let me say, I am not a conspiracy theorist. I actually hate conspiracy theories. I think they are damaging to the political discourse. After Donald Trump was almost shot, a lot of people in my live stream were saying stuff like, oh, it was a fake blood capsule, the entire thing was fake or staged or edited, or the Secret Service people were in on it, and I said, guys, all of these are conspiracy theories that mirror QAnon, we should not stoop to their level, but when Donald Trump uses this rhetoric and it maps on to Project 2025 so cleanly, I don't think it's a conspiracy theory. Listen to this clip and then I'll break it down. 
Yeah. Under no circumstances, you are promising America tonight, you would never abuse power as retribution against anybody. Except for day one. Except for? He's going crazy. Except for day one. Meaning? I want to close the border and I want to drill, that's drill, not a, that's, drill. That's not we are already drilling historic amounts, number one. Number two, President Biden was about to pass a historic border reform bill, but but Donald Trump tanked it. But here's where it really gets weird, and here's where I think Donald Trump is dropping hints to the Heritage Foundation. So, Donald Trump has repeatedly said he is going to be a day one dictator. You guys have all seen it. He said this multiple times. He doubled down after the media lit him up for it. He kept saying, only on day one. Now, when you read Project 2025, written by the Heritage Foundation, they say the term day one at least 30 times. Let me read this phrase. Our goal is to assemble an army of aligned, vetted, trained, and prepared conservatives to go to work on day one to deconstruct the administrative state. Maybe I'm connecting dots that aren't supposed to be connected, but if you look at all of his rhetoric throughout the years, the way he plants seeds and telegraphs moves that he'll make down the road, I don't think it is that far-fetched. I mean, if we think back to the 2020 election, months before it took place, he was saying it's going to be stolen. There's going to be massive voter fraud, so nobody was surprise it was actually completely expected when he took the stage on election night and prematurely declared victory so in this case when he is saying he's going to be a dictator on day one and they're saying in project 2025 all it takes is day one you just need day one to deconstruct the administrative state and they have already assembled an army of aligned vetted and trained prepared people to take the mantle in our institutions i mean they already have this academy going on online and many people involved in trump's administration administration have been training these people to get to work on day one. And that is when the real dismantling of our institutions begins. On day one, they are going to hit the ground running. Now, during his last term, it took him about four years to reach his maximum authoritarian mode, but in his new administration, he is planning on day one to have everything ready so he can maximize all four years, make the most out of them by surrounding himself with loyalists from the first day. Nobody that can check him, nobody that can put him in place, nobody that can push back in a way that maybe Mike Pence did during the final few weeks of their term. But all I ask is that you go make sure you're registered to vote. Go double check that your friends and family are registered. Make sure they have a plan to go vote. Make sure you leave a like on this video, comedy blue heart to help boost the message overall about voting, about pro-democracy. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being a part of this community. Go join the subreddit and the discord. It's all in the description below. You can go find all of it there. We can all panic together, cheer together, laugh together, cry together, depending on what's in the news cycle that day. It's amazing to have a community around you as we're heading into such a high stakes, intense election. But have a great rest of your day and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.